In-ear monitors are a dime a dozen. Search for audiophile IEMs on Amazon or eBay or Google and you'll get many pages of results. The big names like Campfire Audio and Noble make exceedingly expensive IEMs with sound signatures that are not really consistent with the over $500 price tags. Then you have the budget entries like Tin Hi-Fi, Linsoul, and other brands. These offer excellent price to performance with some of their offerings. But let's say you've already done the chi fi thing, you want a more premium product. Let's assume you are done with the pronounced treble and money mids that is the hallmark of a lot of IEMs. And maybe you don't want dead neutral sound, rather a pleasant, smooth presentation. Your checklist therefore includes a premium product that has comfort, smooth sound signature, is under $500 and performs well on a wide swath of music genres. Well, that's what Light Harmonic seemingly wants to achieve with their cheapest IEM. This is the Light Harmonic Mera. And yes, it is a good IEM that's not insultingly expensive. The Mera cost $300 on Amazon. I was lucky and found a brand new pair on eBay and negotiated a generous discount from a private seller. You may not have heard of Light Harmonic. I had not either. I can't remember how I came across the Mera initially, but I was a little intrigued by its style. I went to the Light Harmonic website, which is a bit confusing. The company apparently has a partnership with Tesla, the car company, and manufactures car speakers. But Light Harmonic also has a foot in the audiophile market, offering a stupidly expensive DAC and two IEMs, the Oscar and Stella. Light Harmonic does not have any mention of the Mera on its website. But the Mera are available on Amazon and in three colors. I did a bit more research and it appears that the Mera is indeed a genuine product from Light Harmonic. So what do you get for $300? Well, you get a hell of a lot more than with most $500 products. I've stopped talking about unboxing experiences, but I have to mention the one with the Mera. These headphones are premium. They are packaged like a premium audiophile product. You get a sturdy, beautiful outer case, a thick and useful fake leather carrying case, many ear tips, a quality cable, and gorgeous build overall. You have to pay $500 for a Cord Mojo, and Cord won't even provide you all the cheap cables. If you buy a Sony NWZX507 at $830, you won't get a plastic screen protector, let alone a leather case. You see where I'm going with this? Companies keep charging us premium prices and keep withholding the premium returns. But the Mera is something quite refreshing. Fine, the boxing is nice, so what? $300 is still a lot of money for an IEM. Well, that's true, but maybe the sound will be to your liking. The Mera is not an analytical IEM. It doesn't have harsh or ear-piercing treble. It doesn't provide every detail in a song, but it does have a smooth, mid-focus sound that can be rather addictive. For my initial impressions, I used the RME ADI2 DAC in IEM mode and played music through Amazon Music HD. First of all, the bass is not particularly detailed. There is no clear separation between sub-bass and mid-bass, but the bass does seem to dig fairly deep. On Mountains by Hans Zimmer, the Mera did not present bloated sub-bass rumble. That rumble is supposed to be present within seconds of the music starting. The Mera doesn't produce all of this rumble. You can hear the rolling thunder effect, but that's just because the effect is emphasized in the mix to begin with. Now you might think that this is awful, but wait till you get to the crescendo of this song when all the instruments are playing at maximum. The Mera is able to control the organ so that it does not distort. The strings and percussion instruments are still clear and come right through the mix. And you can hear the rumble without the bloated presentation that is often the hallmark of elevated bass. In Pure Water, the bass again was controlled. At higher volumes, you can hear the thump in the bass, but there is a fast transients. The reverberation of the bass does not interact with the mids. And the mids sound at least two to three steps ahead of the mix. They are clear and undistorted. There is a bit of sparkle to the vocals, but the treble is rolled off, preventing any harshness from creeping in. In Want You Back by Haim, the Mera presented vocals clearly. The primary vocalist sounded dead center, her voice undistorted. The backup vocalist also had unmarred presentation. The Mera barely separated the voices of the three vocalists when the entire mix was playing. 
This, however, is an issue with many IEMs and headphones, to be quite honest. When the three vocalists sang with just the drum and guitar strumming, on the other hand, all three vocalists were clear, separate, and distinct. None of the vocalists had sibilance or harshness. In Scurzo for X-Wings, the mirror provided quite the theatrical effect. The treble was not harsh, but retained some of the energy. The brass and horn still sounded clear and distinct, but did not become fatiguing even at high volume. This is frankly how I recall the music in the theater while watching The Force Awakens. In Flight from the City, Damira rendered the piano and cello smoothly. There was no harshness to the music and no distortion. The piano had a lingering resonance that melded slightly with the cello. The piano sounded as if I was standing about 10 to 15 feet away from it. The Mera did not produce every detail and struggled to present micro-detail, but that's not really surprising considering the sound signature of these IEMs. As for soundstage, I'd say it's about average. To me, the Mera do not sound narrow. There is sufficient room for the instrument resonances to naturally fade without becoming distorted. The Mera has an 8mm dynamic driver. Yes, there are fancier IEMs from China and the United States, and yes, there are cheaper alternatives with hybrid drivers. I've listened to a lot of IEMs. Namera does something unique. The silky smoothness of the mids can be very pleasant. The controlled bass and rolled off treble result in a listening experience that is, indeed, pleasant. If you're the type that wants accuracy and detail, the Namera really aren't for you. But if you're looking for a premium IEM with mids forward presentation and a smooth sound signature, the Namera are an excellent option. You might ask how these compare to other IEMs, and I'll give you three alternatives that have somewhat similar sound signature. The MS-4 is a very warm-sounding IEM. It has a narrow soundstage, thick, less detailed bass, less detailed mids, and a more rolled-off treble. The MS-4 is a great IEM for those who want an intimate presentation. The second alternative is the Bequez Spring 1. The Spring 1 is a very smooth-sounding IEM, but the Spring 1 also has a muddier bass response and the treble is more rolled-off than on the Mira. In comparison, the Spring Run sounds smoother than the Mera. The third alternative is the Blonde BL-03. The Blonde has a well-deserved reputation. It has an elevated bass that also digs slightly deeper than the Mera. The Blonde has a boosted treble, more so than the one on the Mera. The Mera, in contrast, has more control bass than either the Spring 1 or the MS-4. The Mera has slightly more mids-forward presentation than the Spring 1 or MS-4. And it also has more treble energy than both the Spring 1 and MS-4. The Mera has more mids clarity than the Blonde BL-03. The bass on the Blonde bleed into the mids, and that causes a loss of some vocal detail. Furthermore, the Blonde sometimes sounded a bit shouty compared to the Mera, probably because of the treble emphasis the Blonde had over the Mera. As for comfort, the most comfortable IEM in this comparison is the Spring 1, followed by the Mera, then the MS-4, and lastly, the Blonde. The widest soundstage belongs to the Blonde, followed by the Mera, then the Spring 1, and then the MS-4. To be honest, all three competitors, the MS-4, Spring 1, and the BL-03, are pleasant to listen to. They all have different sonic character from the other. And the same is true for the Mera. To me, the Mera has a unique mids presentation, something I haven't quite heard before. The clarity of the vocals combined with just a bit of sparkle make listening to podcasts and music equally pleasant. The Mera is not the most amazing IEM ever made, and there's no such thing as the most amazing piece of gear. But the Mera is unique. It's stylistically pleasant. It is sonically pleasant. And it might be just the right option for you.